right now, I love to talk about the, the shift that we're observing. And at LG Ads, we call it the big shift. We've conducted a couple of pieces, a couple of waves of thought leadership research, really looking into consumer behaviors around television and connected television. And we found some obvious things and some less obvious things. So one of the things we observed was this big shift came in two phases. The first phase really coincided with the onset of the pandemic. So put yourself back into early 2020, you're following stay at home guidance, you're at home, you're consuming more media, you're consuming more TV and streaming TV. At that moment in time, it was really a hockey stick of adoption for streaming television, and it was also underpinned by subscription services rather than ad-supported services. So phase one of the big shift was that adoption of streaming television. Right now, we're in the second phase of the big shift, which is to say people are starting to adopt free ad-supported models of streaming television and subsidized ad-supported models of streaming television. So before it was all subscription or primarily subscription, now we're seeing broad-based adoption of these ad-supported models and it's pretty significant. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's consistent with what I've seen other places in the market and it's really, the two phase is really uh, palpable now, right? And it's, it's I think, coinciding with cord cutting and yeah. cord shave. Like, we don't talk about cord cutting and cord shaving anymore. We did before the pandemic, and then all of a sudden, the streaming hockey stick just sort of took over that conversation. And I certainly yeah. remember sitting in the early days of COVID when I had pretty bad COVID, just, you know, fever binge watching subscription content. Yeah. Um, and I would have been a very, in a, not a valuable ad impression at that point because I was pretty out of it, but yeah. maybe very suggestible. Anyway, um, not what we came here to talk about. One of the things you, one of, one of the stats you cited in the panel was that it takes people an average of five minutes and 37 seconds from when they turn on their TV set until when they start watching content. That both frightens me from the point of view of, of human indecision and also obviously presents a very interesting advertising opportunity. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, and, and really in this territory of conversation, there are three stats that stick out to me. So the first is eight in 10 TV viewers use ad supporter models of streaming. So that didn't surprise me. I actually don't think it's gonna surprise many people. The thing that did surprise me though, is that 63% actually prefer the ad supported models over subscription models. 63%, that's most people prefer the ad supported model. Remembering not that long ago, it was almost entirely subscription. So that's a dramatic change. And then that brings us to your point, this new type of ad supported TV is not just the 30s and 15s that we recognize from previous TV. So sure, we have those types of ads, but there's a whole other advertising opportunity natively baked into the UI. And so you talk about the five minute 42 second, our research indicates that between turning the TV on and then ultimately landing on something to watch, it's almost six minutes. And that presents an opportunity for marketers to connect with their audience using that UI as an advertising canvas. Hollywood loves it. Um, they, they love advertising the latest blockbuster that's available for stream. Streaming apps really enjoy the space, but we're also now starting to see adoption within more general market away from media and entertainment. And it is a rich canvas and if done well, can really enhance the experience, especially while someone's in discovery mode. So one of the interesting opportunities afforded by uh, owning the glass and, and the UI is to do interesting advanced ad units, things that you just can't do in a normal 15 or 30 or 60 or six or, uh, any other way. Can you talk a little bit about uh, interesting things you guys are working on in that domain? Yeah, I, I think we're, we're at the precipice of data fundamentally changing creative efficacy. And, and CTV is a medium where you do not have to, like you used to have to, choose a path that is either brand or direct response. CTV enables you to be what I call a performance storyteller where you can drive a brand impact, but be highly measurable in terms of the outcome that you drove, or be direct response, directly driving a shoppable moment, et cetera. Um, and along with that comes the ability to do things like dynamically change the creative you choose to serve based off data signals. 
So one of the partnerships we have is with the weather company and we're able to serve ads based off the weather pattern. So if, for example, and this is the example we used in our panel a short time ago, maybe it's sunny where you are, but it's rainy where I am. So your hardware store ad in the sunny environment could be featuring products like barbecues, pool toys, equipment, things like that. My ad on the same day in my different geolocation where it's raining might be leak sealer, tarpaulins, things pertinent to the rain. Same company, same campaign, but using the data signal to put relevant information. And so relevancy is the thing that makes an ad connect or miss. And this is enabling us, this, this addressable type of TV connected television is enabling us to do that in a privacy friendly way. That's awesome. Cool. It's so funny to think back to like the early days of addressable cable and the you can overlay the name of your local Toyota dealer on top of the yeah. Toyota ad, and now we're like, yeah, dynamically created AI based on the weather where you are. No problem. I mean, and, and you, were, <laughs> you were talking about it before. You, so you were saying, hey, no one's really talking about cable cutting, cable shaving anymore. People are talking about subscription cycling. But one, two, maybe three live at a given moment in time. I binge the content I want. I cut the subscription, move on to the next one. Um, uh, the other, the other thing that people are talking about, death of the dongles, right? It used to be that you would have to plug a device into your HDMI port of your TV in order to make it a smart TV. As people are adopting new TVs, they're just natively using the UI that's baked in. It's the easiest. It's usually a really good experience. Um, and so, you, you know, strategies that rely on a dongle, I, I'm not, I'm not sure how well they're going to go in the near future. I totally agree. I am very curious what like now that pretty much all TVs are smart, what that does to brand loyalty for consumers, you know, I, I had a Vizio that I bought a while ago, I have an LG that I bought more recently, mm -hmm. the UI and the LG is much better, now I'm only gonna buy LG TVs, so they all work the same. I, I'm, that's gotta be happening. Yeah, so the, there's consistency across LG TVs yep. with the OS and the, yep. the usability. Yeah. It, it, it's really consistent. Yeah. Um, and I would just say, I like to think of it as there's an LG TV for everyone. If you're a household that wants a $10,000 OLED experience, that's available. If you're more budget conscious, that exists as well. And I think that there are just different segments of the market that want different things from the TV in, in, in their house. And then you layer on top of it, Maybe your, maybe your needs out of the living room TV are a little different for a guest room TV. Um, and so I think that it starts to become quite complex, but there is a whole range of these LG TVs for different segments of the market, which gives you a really good mix of different audiences depending on the advertiser. So, uh, you know, uh, the fast food category might, might choose to advertise to a certain demo, whereas luxury goods might be a completely different demo and the type of TV can help inform where those ads go.